r slash credit. What is the thing we don't talk about in your family? My grandfather was an alcoholic who used to beat the shit out of my grandma, and when my mother snuck out as a child to report it to the police he beat the shit out of her too. Grandma managed to take the kids and get the fuck out of there. 30 years later old fuckwood grandfather is dying and has explicitly cut my mother out of his will and left a considerable amount of money to her two brothers. Coincidentally at the same time I'm born. So they named me after him, a literal monster. It worked, I guess. They got back in the will. So yeah, when people ask me how I got my name I just make up some story about a poet or something, because the real reason kinda sucks. <laughs> Apparently our dad had another kid about 8 years older than me. My mom blurted something about it after their divorce, when she was pissed about something. It was along the lines of if he thinks he can forget you exist like that other kid of his. She then turned very white, and I was never able to get more out of her than that. My dad pretends he doesn't know what I'm talking about, but has apparently told my brother a bit of the story and then backtracked and never talked about it again. So yeah, apparently I'm not the oldest. Clearly mom never forgot. That kid might actually appreciate knowing that his B.O. dad's wife acknowledges he exists. I know I would. At least then someone in that entire family would so that maybe, just maybe, I could meet my siblings one day. My brother who died. We never ever talk about him. It's so strange. Growing up I knew I had a brother and I knew he was hit and killed by a car walking home. But I don't know anything about him aside from that. I've seen his pictures. I know what he looked like. I don't know anything about his personality, his likes or his dislikes, the type of music he listened to. I once found his comics in my mum's closet when I was younger, but that was about it. It is almost like it's just a story and he wasn't a real person. It wasn't until my grandfather died about 11 years ago and my mother and I walked to his grave. She broke down into an inaudible mess, then it really hit me for the first time ever that he was a real person, as crazy as that sounds. I don't understand that pain of losing a child but it hurt to see my mom mourn like that, almost as if it had just happened. The only time since then he was ever mentioned was by my dad a few months ago. Out of my mother, father, and sisters I'm the tallest, my dad told me how the only one of us who was taller than me was Jimmy, and how he always seemed to keep growing, how he probably would have towered over me. I almost cried, I wish I got to know him. Update, as someone had suggested in the comments I could check for archived information either by visiting a library to look for a news article and or obituary. I tried to search online for these things with no luck. I did however find archived yearbooks. I searched a couple before I found the school he went to. The first book was for backquote 86 and on my phone I couldn't find backquote 87 the year he died. Once I got to a computer I was able to find it. After the sophomore class page there was a nice memoriam for him. Also I had his age wrong as I realized reading his memoriam, I had taken the year he was born and the year he died and came up with 16, when in fact he died before his birthday that year, making him only 15. It was nice to read kind words about him and his apparent love for music. I've linked it below with his last name blurred and his picture cropped out, the name at the bottom is not his last name, I'm assuming it's the person who wrote it. Since seeing this, I now feel the need to know what happened. Before I had felt sad about it and decided I'd just never know. After this it has in a way lit the fire to find out anything and everything I can. I'm nervous to ask family, but I just may. I will be doing what I can to find out anything on my own first. That New Year's Eve, when my mom tried to commit suicide by swallowing a BJNCH of antidepressive pills. For years everyone has acted like it didn't happen. She doesn't want to talk about it. Both she and I saw therapists for it. Almost the same thing happened to me. My mom swallowed a ton of sleeping pills and we had to rush her to the hospital. Later, when she got out of counseling or whatever, she and a few other family members said it was basically my brother and I that caused it and had almost killed her. I was 11 and my brother was 8. It wasn't you or your brother. I hope you know that. 
When I was growing up, I always heard stories about my dad as a kid hanging out in his mom's tavern. The first time we visited his hometown, he showed us his house, which is on a crossroads and split level, front door goes to the top floor, basement or lower floor, opens out the back, which has the small road slash parking area and that's where the tavern was. It wasn't until many years later that it dawned on me that my dad grew up during prohibition, grandma was a bootlegger, it gets better. His hometown is on a road that was considered a bootleggers highway from Canada. He went through jump school in the same class as Henry Hill, whose life Goodfellas was based on. One night in my teens a friend of his, who I'd never heard of, knocked on the door at 10pm. He and his two buddies, all Italian, wanted a place to sleep for the night. They were gone in the morning. His pension and the work he did after he retired couldn't possibly explain a lifestyle. Mom has forbidden me from digging into it any further. Oh man. When my mom was growing up she was sexually abused by her grandfather. I think everyone sort of knew, but never did anything about it, and then he died, and it's still this unspoken thing. Then, when I was a young girl growing up, I was sexually abused by my cousin on that side of the family who's 15 years older than me, until I was about 14. Again I think everyone sort of knew, and then just didn't say anything. When I finally had the courage to flat out tell my mom what was happening, she talked to him once, accepted his excuse, and we never talked about it for another 12 years. A few months ago I brought it up for some reason and her response was basically that one. I need to get over it, and two. What did I expect her to do when I told her? Make a big scene, get him arrested. Tell my aunt, now I have my 5 month old son and everyone knows that he is never to go near that cousin and why. I don't even want him to lay eyes on my son. It makes things awkward for other people in my family, like my mom, and you have no idea how much of a shit I don't give. They make a lot of passive aggressive comments about how I'm paranoid, won't let him co-sleep with other people, and won't let them just take him out of the house to visit other people without me there. Um yeah. Because clearly you all have terrible judgment. He's my child. Keeping him away from an own sexual predator isn't being paranoid. It's pretty much the bare minimum in terms of decent parenting. You also should not ever allow your son to be alone with your mom. She will not protect him and does not think sexual abuse is worth mentioning. <laughs> that my parents died from AIDS in the early 90s when I was 2. Growing up I never knew how my mother died, and I was told my father just disappeared. I remember throwing a tantrum in middle school for wanting to know what really happened to my parents. My aunt finally told me the truth, well more yelled at me about it. I remember crying alone in my room for hours. I'm pretty sure their death was the starting point for how strange my family is, and how my family hasn't mentioned it since then, and I'm now 27. As far as I know we've never said the words HIV or AIDS aloud in my family. If it must be talked about it's that disease or something similar. My friends constantly wonder why I never mention my parents, and I still have hangups telling people why slash how they passed away. It makes me feel so conflicted inside because I know I should have nothing to feel ashamed of, but my family and society makes me feel my parents deaths should be swept under the rug. Edit, I want to make it clear we do talk about my mother. She isn't forgotten. Just her death and the exact cause is something that is avoided at all costs. My wife has HIV, I don't. I'm 30, I know there's a huge stigma surrounding it, I basically keep it a 100% secret, but I feel like it's getting to the point where society is starting to see it more as a preventable slash treatable illness and less as an immoral person's death sentence. At least I see it that way. It's definitely not a death sentence anymore. In fact, with treatment it's barely contagious. We took a very slight risk, in the order of 100th comma 000, having children the natural way, and myself and our two daughters remain infection free to this day. I'm not advocating following in my footsteps, because it was a risk for sure, but it's far less dangerous with modern medicine. Since a couple years, before we reconnected slash started dating up until now, 
Her viral levels have always been undetectable. She gets tested monthly. I get tested twice a year. Undetectable means that per 10 milliliters of our blood samples, no HIV can be found. They can detect as little as 5 viral cells in a 10 milliliter sample, which contains 75 million white blood cells. I'm considered virus free, because I've never had it, she's considered undetectable, because she definitely has the virus, but it is being suppressed by her immune system plus modern medicine, but basically our blood tests show the same thing, no detectable viral load. Not sure why I entered into this gigantic rant, and I'm sorry your parents suffered through the horrible passing they did, but tomorrow is a new day, that we can discuss these things. Edit, a couple apostrophes and the fact that you, ok, have nothing to be ashamed about. My grandfather remarried a woman who almost immediately developed Alzheimer's, and forgot who he is. He is now dating his first wife, while his actual wife is confused who anyone is. He refuses to divorce, because the scumbag family of his second wife bailed when they saw how expensive she was going to be, and my family had to get her care, because she was too much for my grandfather to take care of, he is almost 90. I called out the relevant members of her family for bailing, and was told I was being rude, which might be true, but I'm also fucking right. A co-worker's neighbor does something similar. I went over to this guy's place for his kid's 10th birthday and I noticed two men and a woman sighting in the backyard. Asked my co-worker about them, just trying to break the ice at this point, since I was only chatting with his wife at this point over Martinez. Turned out one was the second husband, she lives with her first to help out expenses and his medical situation. First husband had no family and developed dementia and Alzheimer's years after their split. She was very much still fond of him, and her second husband and she agreed to help him out, they moved in, cleaned out his home of garbage, and take him to all his medical apps. The few days he's lucid he apparently backquote treats them to a nice day on the town, and will thank them so much for still caring. I nearly cried my eyes out with my co-worker's wife hearing this, and I'm about to keep crying here as well. Edit, I saw my co-worker today, and asked them how they are doing. They got him a pet dog to keep him company when they are out doing errands now. I'm not done crying yet. My uber catholic grandparents met when my grandpa was married. He left his wife, my grandmother got pregnant, and they eloped in the 40s. My grandma was 18 and my grandpa was 27. He took her to her senior prom. No one knew about this until last year and my uncle was born early. Apparently no one in my family can do math and never added up the birth and marriage dates. Oh, they can do the math. Even when they don't try to pass the kid off as early and don't talk about it. Your uncle probably figured it out at some point. I realized I was a shotgun wedding baby one day sitting in class freshman year when it hit me that there are not 9 months between November and April. And still it was never talked about until after Wright graduated. So, they probably know. It's just hush hush. The numerous suicides. It's finally getting to the point where they admit that these people even existed, let alone died. One of my great uncles killed himself before I was born, and if not for all the group photos and my great aunt being a decent human, I wouldn't have ever known his name. My mom likes to pretend they died in car accidents or heart attacks. It made for some real confusion once I got older. I was always told by my family that my biological grandfather on mom's side died in a rock climbing accident right before mom was born. I found out last year that what actually happened was, while he was still attending a military college in the south in the 60s, my grandmother discovered that he liked to wear women's clothing after finding a box of dresses in his size in his closest. The next day, she came back to find him hanging from the ceiling, and she and two of her brothers had to smuggle his body out of the room and convince a coroner to rule it an accident. I'm honestly not even sure of who all in the family knows the truth, but anyone who does sure as hell doesn't talk about it. Edit, I really didn't expect this to blow up as much as it did. I want to thank everyone in their comments for their kind words and to clarify a few things. 
Just for privacy sake I'm not going to say what college this took place at. I feel a little guilty as is putting such a personal family story out on the internet without giving more identifying info on top of it. To clarify, my grandmother found the dresses in his closet on campus, left out of shock slash confusion, and then came back to his room on campus to find him dead. It didn't happen in their shared house or at her place, I apologize for the confusing wording. In that time and place, and in the military as well as my religious conservative family specifically, suicide was beyond stigmatized, and any investigation into why my grandfather killed himself would more than likely uncovered his secret and tarnished his memory in the community's eyes, hence the cover-up. My mother was the one that told me this story, so I haven't heard it from the three people who were actually there and probably never will. One of her brothers died before I was born and my grandmother is suffering from a degenerative mental illness that has completely destroyed her memory. It was Thanksgiving. My parents had recently returned from Hawaii. My dad wanted to show everyone the photos. He connected the digital camera to the giant flat screen TV and started up a slideshow of my mother, naked, in their bedroom. He scrolled through several and then quickly turned it off and said whoops, wrong cartridge. I was 21 and my boyfriend was with me for the holidays for the first time. My mom started crying. My boyfriend went silent. I just said oh my god. Somehow my 100 year old grandma missed the whole thing. We never speak of it. If it is brought up, my mother will yell we swore to never mention that. And get red faced. Edit, you'll my mom would be mortified that I told the internet. Let's all agree to never mention it to her. That is so hilarious. My sister found some naked pics of my mom too. She freaked, put them back and ran away. When my husband and I got married, I had some bridal boudoir photos done to give him on a wedding day. Nothing naked, just bridal lingerie. Now that we have a two year old and one on the way, he's put those photos in our fireproof box and locked it up. He doesn't want the kids finding them someday. Okay, to break the chain of secret girlfriends and estranged relatives, my family does not talk about cottage cheese. I can tell you want to hear more about this, for that we must start at the beginning. My father is a lover of all things dairy. He would drink so much milk as a child his mother would tell him you either have to become a dairy farmer or marry a farmer's daughter. And dear dad did just that when he and my mom tied the knot. Dad also loves cheese, solid cheese, soft cheese, and cottage cheese. Dad is however very squeamish. He cannot stand the sight or thought of blood, body fluids, or cheese curds. This makes enjoying his cottage cheese by the court difficult. No one is allowed to talk about cheese, curds, whey, or how it is all made when he is enjoying his snack. If you make the mistake of mentioning any of these things dad ends the conversations by throwing his hands in the air and yelling we don't talk about that. That's so strange that he's squeamish about body fluids but loves milk and cheese. He knows milk is quite literally a body fluid, right? My mother's mental and physical abuse of both me and my sister during our childhoods. Can't talk about it with her because the conversation never goes anywhere. Same shit every time I try to bring it up to get the smallest bit of closure that never happened. Turns to well, if it happened it didn't happen like that to well, if it happened like that then you provoked me and it's all your fault. On a certain level she believes she genuinely was not abusive because what she did to me was much more mild than the even more abusive upbringing she had herself and she thinks the fact that she did better means she did good. Can't talk about it with my sister because she's much older than I am and got the fuck out of the house the second she could. Not that I blame her and wrote off the entire family, not only my mom, but also me and everyone else. And I've never had any relationship with her and have been rebuffed when I've tried to reach out. Can't talk about it with extended family because my mother never did anything in front of them and I'm a perpetual fuck up, so I have zero credibility. Tried talking to an aunt I used to be close to about it once, and she scolded me for making up stories, and immediately told my mother what I had said. 
I knew that, if she didn't believe me none of the rest of them would, and never tried again. My dad never talks about his sister. She stole thousands from her father, fled to New Mexico, and is now hosting my great uncle and waiting for him to die so she can claim his belongings. I don't know if he's actually going to will anything to her, but she seems certain. I haven't seen my aunt in over a decade, but she's a real piece of work. My mom complains about it a lot, but the rest of her family doesn't really like to admit that they don't talk to her much. There was some big drama years ago where they fought over mom's parenting. This was largely because of me, and since then my mom's sister and parents rarely speak to her. My family also refuses to talk about or acknowledge my parents' disciplinary methods, which involve taking one of us unruly children, throwing us in a tub of cold water, and dunking our heads under it repeatedly while yelling at us. They did this for years any time one of us got seriously out of line. They also once force fed my sister mustard because she hates it. Maybe you can see why my relatives disagreed with mom's parenting. A lot of people in my family are alcoholics. It's okay to acknowledge that they drink a lot, but it's not okay to call them alcoholics, even when they do things like routinely pass out on their front lawn, getting a huge number of DUIs, drinking so much Labatt that the company sends them a flag and a lawn chair, getting fired from Fabricland for drunkenly screaming at customers then barfing on a quilt, or getting pulled over on a motorized beer cooler by the RCMP. All those incidents can be discussed, so long as no one mentions alcoholism. Jesus. Are you from Saskatchewan or Alberta? I'm from Alberta, but most of these incidents happened in Saskatchewan and Manitoba. Ahaha <laughs> oh my god. Tells a story that is pretty goddamn vague and that guy narrows it down to two provinces. Hilarious. When I was about 5 years old, my mom. Grandma, brother and I were about an hour from home, and we stopped to get gas. We went inside to pay, but we were 13 cents short. My mom told the clerk be right back, I'll go get it from the car. So we all go back to the car, and my mom hands me 13 cents, and asks me to go pay the clerk. I go inside, and by now a line has formed. I waited in line. Not realizing that I'd probably would have been fine to just go up to the front to just hand him the money. When I finally finished, I walk outside, and I could see our min even driving away. My family was nowhere to be found. They'd left without me, in an unfamiliar neighborhood, 50 miles from home. I got scared, but I can remember feeling like, surely this isn't as abnormal as it feels. They'll be right back, right? So I began to cry, and I walked over and sat on a concrete slab next to the gas station. I'm not sure how long it was, but at least several minutes later I finally saw the van returning. When they pulled up, my mom was bawling, and she began hugging and kissing me and apologizing. Apparently what happened was my brother, Seven Yo, closed the heavy sliding door and my mom, hearing that sound, assumed it was after I'd crawled back in. So she started to drive away. After all, how long could it take me to deliver 13 cents? The story definitely makes my mother look pretty bad, but because I was so young when it happened, and it was so out of character for her, I was never really mad at her. So for the next 15 years or so, we'd tell people that story and kinda laugh about it. My mom would laugh too. Turns out, her laughter was forced. It tore her up inside any time we talked about it. She finally confessed to us how it made her feel, and we all just sorta of agreed to never bring it up again. We weren't mad at her. We'd totally forgiven her for her mistake and made sure she knew that, but she was never able to forgive herself. She's still around and is an amazing mother. We just never tell that story anymore. Edit. So many responses to this post. I'm glad I'm not the only that thinks my grandma's opinion of the situation is fucked. My mother told me the story, and since she was so young when it happened, there's a lot of details missing, and stuff I simply don't know. To clarify, since there's some confusion, the victim was my grandma's niece, the rapist was the victim's grandfather, and the rapist was my grandma's father. I don't know what happened to the victim. She left El Salvador with her baby, and were never heard from again. 
The victim's mother, my grandmother's sister, passed a few years later. She never told anyone where she had sent her daughter to op, my great grandfather's baby with his youngest granddaughter. He was 75 at the time, and she was 14. My grandmother still blames the girl stating that she was a loose little girl and clearly seduced my great grandfather. My grandma almost gets a heart attack every time I mention to her that her father was a disgusting pig that preyed on the little girl and abused her. The parrot from Hawaii. When I was in kindergarten my family took a trip to Honolulu. While there, a man on the street asked if we wanted photos with his parrots. My sisters and I were jazzed up about it, so my parents said okay. The man had each of us holding a parrot, or a parrot sitting on our shoulder as my mom snaps some pics. Then the man asked my dad to kiss the parrot. My dad was not about this. He was not going to kiss the parrot, but to make my family happy and to get away from parrot man he did. And that's when the parrot chomped his lip. Blood and everything. To this day, over 10 years later, mention of the parrot will incite a 20 minute rant from my dad regarding parrot negligence, and then he gets so mad he has to go fix something in the garage. Do not. Bring up. The parrot. Edit. Thank you for the gold. For the sake of your kind strangers, I told my dad about his reddit fame. He's proud to know there are so many of you against parrot negligence, and now he's off to fix something in the garage. My mother-in-law won't tell my wife who my wife's biological father is slash was. Even to this day. My wife is almost 50 and her mother is quickly approaching 70. Their relationship was strained for years because my my wife's mother was an absentee mother. Now their relationship is better than ever, but my mother-in-law still won't say. It has caused my wife a lifetime of unnecessary grief. My sister's eating disorder. She eats a ton and goes on to vomit. She goes jogging for one hour or more per day, every day, no breaks even though her knees hurt like crazy, and refuses to eat any carbs, fruits and vegetables only. I seem to be the only one that realizes the magnitude of this. I seem to be the only one that thinks of this as a sickness, not as a temporal phase it's like this for 3 years already, no idea when my parents noticed in the life of a young woman. Whenever I say something I get shushed at and later have to justify my insensitive behavior in front of my parents. So I just kind of gave up on arguing. Not sure what I can do to change things without disrupting the family. As someone who did the same for about 13 years and had people both ignore it and speak to me about it, there's not much. Frankly you can ease into the conversation and offer support here and there but at least in my experience, people talking to me about it, if they weren't already the people I was disclosing my behavior to, made me ignore them and distance myself if you're non-judgmental, gentle, and try to focus on harm reduction for her behaviors, it may help. Thanks for commenting. Rough to know that I there is almost nothing I can do to help her. I'm currently trying to canvass her to go to the dentist regularly because her diet is almost exclusively salad, oranges and apples. Pretty sure that's bad for her tooth enamel. One of my cousins is a convicted pedophile. My other cousin, his older brother, is in jail for domestic violence and he and his wife had their child taken away. My other rather cousin, their sister, has three children. One is with her, one is with her first husband, and one is still a little bun in the oven. Their other sister is about to have a baby too. The two sisters got married a month apart this summer. They're all between 18 and 25. We gossip about all of that sometimes, but we don't have mention the time their mom tried to get my dad to adopt them because she just didn't want to deal with them anymore. My grandparents try to look like a perfect picture. Reality is my mom's never met her real dad. My step grandfather who we have never acknowledged aloud is not her father was a shit drunk who has been on pain pills since he quit drinking. Pain pills my grandmother steals and eats. My uncle married a girl after getting her preggers at 15. Turned out her sister was really her mother in a religious scandal. Other uncle has been on a gambling binge for 30 years. My mum died after getting addicted to the same opiates the family loves and having an aneurysm. I once caught my grandfather masturbating to Baywatch. All those things, never a fucking word. 
Edit clearing the air here. I'm a female from a family of upper middle class. One side Native American mostly, one side Jewish. My family keeps a great image, have held great jobs slash careers, and do not talk about their problems in the open. So no, it's not really as big of a mess as some assume. More like a rabid pack of dogs behind closed doors and closed curtains. My aunt discovered her sister was actually her mother when some genetic testing was happening for separate issues. She grew up thinking her grandmother was her mother and her mother her sister. Jehovah's Witness. I have no ability to respond to all these questions. I'm kind of a hermit and have never had so much response. Thank you for peeping my skeletons. That's quite the list. Family gatherings must be few and quiet. The whole grandpa yanking it to Baywatch thing isn't so weird though. Old folks don't necessarily know how to find porn online, and they grew up in a time when full nudity was much more rare and harder to find. So a woman in a bikini would be plenty reason to whip it out. From what I gather, that's a big reason that show was so popular.